Hey guys, welcome back as always. My name is Lazar, and today we're gonna do something very simple, very easy. <laughs> we're gonna make a tier list. And what better tier list to make than the incarnate tier list? Because these are the most relevant weapons in the game. Though, do bear in mind, I'm not a melee guy. I don't enjoy holding my E key pressed down. However, we will still be touching on a couple of melee weapons simply because they are important depending on the circumstances. For example, this one in B tier, you got the incarnate Magistar adapter. And why is it there? Because it's the best stat stick weapon that you can have for Atlas and a one punch build. Especially if you got Magus Agress. Agris, I don't know. It's the one that gives you 300% critical damage for four consecutive attacks, cooldown 20 seconds. Now it says on heavy blades, but it also applies to hammers. Speaking about best stat stick weapons in the game, check out the ceramic dagger. While the Magistar may be best for Atlas, in general, the best stat stick weapon in the game is gonna be the ceramic dagger. And you gotta get it, especially if you enjoy, you know playing Warframe. It's simply something that you must get. S tier godlike weapon. We're talking about the nitty gritty here. We're talking about the Burston Prime. What about I said? Incarnate Burston Prime. This is an absolutely deadly weapon that can handle basically any content in Warframe. It's not only fantastic to use, but it's also very powerful. You're talking about a big incarnate charge of 600 bullets and there are no ordinary bullets on hit scan, and they also explode. Now granted, the actual explosion is not all that big, but it's still area of effect. It's very similar to another weapon, it's gonna be the Bratton. Now while the Bratton may hit harder depending on how you chose your incarnations or evolutions, it's not as easy to use, it's not as comfortable as the Burston. So for that reason, we're gonna knock it down to A tier. Check out both of these incarnate weapons, they are fully capable of essentially annihilating everything that stands before you. Next up, we're going to be talking about the teapot, the Branco. Well, you see, normally, among weapons of Warframe, this would be absolutely fantastic. In incarnate form, it has an insta-link mechanic, and who doesn't like that? It's a pseudo-form of AoE, much like Punch Root. But the problem with this one, it's basically outclassed by most of the incarnate weapons in this list, which is why it's going into C tier. Again, it's not a bad weapon, you should check out the full guide on it. You gotta take a look at them within the incarnate weapon pool, and within the incarnate weapon pool, it's simply not all that fantastic. But this one, <laughs> this one absolutely is. We're talking about the incarnate Boltor. This is an amazing single target weapon, 100% no questions about it. It's easy to use, it's pretty straightforward, it can absolutely annihilate any enemy that stands before you. So if single targets is your game, this is not the only weapon you should go for, but it's among the absolute best. The dual Toxo says, now this is an absolutely incredible secondary weapon. The problem with secondary weapons in Warframe is the fact that most Teno simply use them for, you know, priming your targets and then killing them with something else. Most of the time, a melee weapon. And that's definitely an effective playstyle. But if you want to use your secondary weapon to actually kill stuff, there are three top secondary weapons in Warframe. This is one of them. It can basically chop through any content that Warframe can offer, and it's going into A tier. It's hard to compare a secondary to a primary, so I'm just ranking it like an overall feel and power in the game. So we're gonna keep it at B tier. As for the Furious, this is, I feel this is a underrated weapon, the Incarnate Furious. It's the power of the sun within your palm, and it's extremely effective when it comes to Archon Hunt, so do try to give it a spin. For now, it's going into B tier. The Incarnate Kunai. Now, this is not overly fantastic. The gimmick is the fact that it can lock onto enemies' heads. So, if you got some sort of Riven challenge, this one can help you. Honestly, among Incarnate weapons, it's not really all that powerful or that usable. It goes into C tier. At least, it's not melee. Speaking about melees that I actually... Well, I kind of like this one. And I'll tell you why. Hold on. Don't yell at me. This one actually fires a ranged projectile while you use it. Now, granted, you're not gonna use it the uh, sniper shot from 200 meters away, but still, the Incarnate Hate is a very powerful weapon, and it does shoot projectiles, so it's a bit more interesting than most melee weapons. As per the usual, if you wanna see a full and detailed build guide, there's gonna be a link in the upper right portion of the screen. There are two builds for it, just like most melee weapons, and it's extremely effective. If you just wanna press E and win, this is definitely one of those weapons. And it's gonna be going... Fine, AD. The Incarnate Lex. You guys remember when I said there are three top secondary weapons in the game? This is one of them and it's personally my favorite. It's the most powerful Plasmor within the Plasmor family. Let's call it the extended Plasmor family since it's not actually a Plasmor. It's still a bit problematic because the fire rate is not all that fantastic, but if you can't find a source for fire rate in Warframe, then you shouldn't really be looking at a tier list. You should learn the base mechanics. This is an absolutely glorious secondary weapon. I highly recommend this from my point of view. It's the best secondary weapon in the game. It's gonna be going into A tier. Melee. 
Incarnate Red. Mm. When it comes to bows, there are two fantastic bows right now. We're talking about the Dread and the Paris. The difference between the two is minute. The problem with these, you still gotta charge them through the regular old bow attack. And a lot of Tenno simply don't like that. In incarnate form, when Paris kind of like an Arca Plasmor like projectile that does not have that headshot multiplier, they're good, they're fantastic, but still, getting to the charge is a bit off-putting to Samtena, which is why they're not going into A tier, but both of them are going to be going into B tier. If you're interested, which is the more powerful between the two, the Paris is just slightly better. Trust me, you don't need to go out of your way just to get the Paris over the Dread. Simply use whatever you have handy, it's not going to make a big difference. Melee! Now, this one is also used as a statistic weapon, so it's not gonna go into monkey spammers, it's gonna go into C. We're talking about the Incarnan Scana. Well, Incarnan Prisma Scana. Some of you have a Scana Prime, and my respects to you, those only go to the founders, for example, like Technical Potato has that. Unless my memory is failing, which is possible. Melee! Melee! The Atomos! Now, this, this is special. The Atomos is an absolutely fantastic starting player weapon. If you're Mastery Rank 7 or something like that, you should definitely try out the Atomos. It's an absolutely glorious secondary weapon. It basically chains to additional targets. And while the B might make you to believe that, hey, it kind of works like the Ignis, in actuality, it kind of works like the Amprax. It's a fantastic weapon, and later down the line, when you get high up in Mastery, you can use the Incarnate Adapter on this one. The problem with the Incarnate Adapter well, initially it was bugged, like, I don't know, three quarters of the Incarnate weapons when they came out. They fixed it afterwards, but the initial impact of the weapon was that, hey, it's not really all that powerful within the Incarnate weapon pool. It's still more powerful than basically 80% of weapons in Warframe, and it's gonna be going into B tier. This is a very strong weapon. What I would do with it is not necessarily use it for the Incarnate form, I would use it for the normal form, and I would build it like that. Again, highly recommend the Atomos. Ah, the Vasto, the Incarnate Vasto. You know the problem with this one is? It's amazing for two seconds. It basically can blow up an Acolyte if you blink. It's that powerful. But then <laughs> it's out of charge and you need to recharge it again. So the way that I recommend you play with this one, you get a charge and wait for the Acolyte. You blow them up, get a charge again, and then just simply clear the normal mobs or the trash mobs using your primary weapon, your melee weapon, or whatever else you prefer. And keep this one just to blow up that Acolyte. It's going into B tier. You know what the problem with this one is? I know a lot of old school Tenno that still haven't gotten the blueprint for this one. And since the blueprint is not tradable, and if you're unlucky with the Stalker, you might never get this one. What does it do in incarnate form? It basically carpet bombs. That's what it does. Is it effective? Yes, but the problem is the charge is not all that high. So it can be a pain to charge this one just for that fantastic carpet bombing experience, but it's still worth it because it is quite fun to use and it is quite powerful. Goes into B tier. Next up, ah, oh, I love this one. This is absolutely insane. The Strong Prime. Keep in mind, you can also upgrade the Wraith if you prefer. The Prime is just a bit more powerful and is what I recommend. My friends, this one fires like a plasma ball thing that explodes upon impact. It was one of the first incarnate weapons from the Duvidi Paradox that essentially made a big impact on us. We realized that, hey, the AoE meta is coming back because it was nerfed by the, and then it came back like a month later, like three times more far. That's not important. What is important this is a fantastic, highly recommended weapon. It's beautiful. It's powerful. It's strong. And you know what? It's an old school weapon that was forgotten, and now it's definitely a front runner. Goes into A tier. Ah, the Incarnate Mitre. I absolutely love this one. It's an outstanding weapon, but I'll tell you why I can't put it into S tier. Simply because the Incarnate Charger on this one is simply too small. That's what she. Not important. 20 charge is not all that fantastic. While the projectile itself locks onto targets and bounces between them, exploding with each and every single contact. Much like the Latron, the charge is too small, then you gotta charge it again. And the actual projectile does have travel time, and some Tenno have a bit of issue getting headshots with projectile-based attacks, which is why it's staying into A tier. If it had like, I don't know, 200 charge, then we would be cooking with gas. The Incarnate Latron just goes into S tier. If you haven't played with it by now, this is one of the most powerful weapons in the game, no questions about it. It has the same bounty projectile, and also you charge this one by hit scan headshot attacks, which is a lot easier than a projectile based attack it's a fantastic weapon it's something that everybody needs to try in warframe and i'm very happy to see it at the top of the ranking simply because before the the paradox update everybody was making fun of the latron it was one of the worst weapons in the game 
they were calling it the latrine and that just hurts my soul the incarnate prisma gorgon now i'm a fanboy when it comes to this one i simply love the initial weapon it was my favorite ar in the game and there are plenty to love the problem with this one, it simply wasn't all that fantastic on release. You got yourself those explosions, which weren't all that great. Then they fixed it, they buffed it a little bit, and it was a bit better. I still don't feel that Tenno are fully aware of the power that this one has. It's going to be going into 8 here. Give it a try, you will not be disappointed. Keep in mind, we're talking about the Incarnate Weapons. So these are two steps above basically almost anything else, with a couple of exceptions. Torrid S tier, I mean... To not call this one the most broken weapon in the game would be doing it at a service. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's very easy to use, easy to charge. While the projectile that charges the weapon is a projectile based attack, it's that infested grenade with the cloud thing. The cloud doesn't actually get you charged, but the projectile needs to make contact with any body part. That's right, you don't need to get a headshot. And the charge, because of this, is very easy to get, especially if you got some projectile flight speed in the Excel slot. And then in incarnate mode, it basically melts everything that stands before it and it changes to additional targets granted you do lose some damage as the beam chains but hey you can't have them all this once again is the type of weapon that you take when you want to melt everything that stands before you the latest game mode for example netro cells this is one of the most used weapons and for good reason you also got a pretty good riven disposition on all of the st rankings so enjoy it while it lasts the Leto. Now, there is a Leto Prime. The problem with the Leto Prime is the same problem with the Scana Prime. Only founders have it. But is it actually a powerful weapon? And the answer is, well, yes. It has the same multi-link mechanic that you see on the Teapot Prime. But is it all that powerful? Again, if you compare it to normal everyday weapons, it's hella powerful. If you compare it within the pool of incarnate weapons, not so much. It's going to be going into C tier. The Angstrom. This one transforms into a marshmallow shooter that locks onto targets. Now, keep in mind, they only look marshmallowy. They do pack a punch. This is quite the powerful weapon. Definitely give it a spin if you're into secondary weapons, then, you know, don't just simply prime target. It's gonna go into B tier. This one has been described as a torrid wannabe. This is the Incarnate Boar, and it has functionality similar to the torrid, but the lock-on mechanic on this one is a bit finicky and kind of goes astray from time to time. No question, this is, again, a very powerful weapon, and it can melt, essentially, level cap if you build it correctly, and if you got the right setup, it's going into A tier. Incarnate Zylog Prime. Now, this one on release, well, on release you had the normal Zylog, then the Prime came out with Grendel Prime, so that was a nice mixture, Grendel Prime with Zylog. Anyway, it doesn't matter. On release, it was extremely bugged in the sense that the explosion had line of sight issues, so it would only damage the targets it would see. Not only that, multi shot would do nothing for the explosion, it was semi fixed. Multi shot still doesn't do anything for the explosion but it's significantly more powerful than on release. It's a bit situational and you're going to be needing the augment for it, which is why it's going into C tier. Next up, we got the Incarnate Soma Prime. You know the amount of disappointment this community had on the release of the Incarnate Soma Prime. Essentially, we were running high off of the release of the initial very powerful Incarnate weapon. So we were expecting the Soma to dominate. Imagine our disappointment when it comes out and it doesn't dominate. Actually, it wasn't really all that powerful and the Hatasatia was not usable on it. And of course, a lot of Tenno said, hey, it's bad because we can't use the Hatasatia. A lot of Tenno simply put a lot of price on pretty numbers on your screen, on orange or red crits. Orange and red crits are very limited depending on how much critical damage you have for them. And just like most multipliers in Warframe, the more you add of them, the less you're going to be getting out of them. That is math diminishing returns. Here's how things stand now. It has been kind of fixed and you can use the Hata Satya. It's a fantastic single target weapon. When it comes to single target weapons, however, it does have fantastic company and I would go for the Boltor over the Soma. Now, of course, you might agree or might not agree. Let me know in the comment section down below. Still, it's definitely not as bad as it was on release and I know there's a lot of Soma Prime fans out there. The Incarnate Gamma Core came and went and most Tenno simply didn't care because it's simply not all that powerful. Again, this was somewhat of a disappointment within the Incarnate Weapon Pool. It's not a weak weapon by any stretch of the imagination and would still give the Incarnate Sinoid Gamma Core because that's going to be your best option, a spin. Next up, the Latum. Like I said earlier, there are three most powerful secondary weapons in the game. This is simply one of them. The Latum is absolutely insane and it's part of the OG Incarnate Weapons. 
the OG incarnate weapons even have more incarnations. Now, they are fantastic, they're still usable. Just because they're not as new as the rest of them doesn't make them any weaker. The Latham is still one of the best top 3 secondary weapons in the game, no questions. Along with the Toxocyst and of course that fantastic Lex. The Fenmore. If you want single target damage, this one will deliver. And it has a bit of build diversity. You can build it one of two ways. Which is more than I can say for most incarnate weapons. What I was hoping initially with the incarnate system is some actual build diversity. And I think they tried with the initial four incarnate weapons, but then kind of gave up. Of course, there will always be a meta. There will always be the most optimal way to do things. So, there you go. The Fellart. This one goes into A tier as well. Fantastic again when it comes to single target, but this is a shotgun. Therefore, you're going to be using different mods and it has been used for the longest time to destroy Archons. Now, granted, destroying Archons is not that difficult anymore, but still the Fellart remains a fantastic single target weapon. It's not really going to be outdoing the Boltor, but it has a huge following. And I know you guys wanted to see it in S tier, but it's simply not an S tier weapon. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with my tier list? Or do you think things should have been a bit different? Let me know what are your top weapons in the game in the comment section down below. As always, one of my smiles are like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And keep in mind, you got full and detailed build guides on all of these weapons. Except the melee ones, of course. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.